Stadium, Denver, Colorado. You say, why are we here? Well, we figured that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, so that puts him, oh, about a mile high. So that's where we're here. Actually, it's just a beautiful location. I think we're all becoming well aware of the incredible influence that Satanism is having in this country. But one of the questions we have is why are teenagers being caught up in such a dangerous and perverted thing like Satanism? I believe one of the reasons is because of the heavy metal satanic music that they're listening to. You know, Denver is also the home of one of the most controversial and well-known talk radio hosts in America. His name is Bob Larson. And Bob recently toured with the most popular satanic band in the world, Slayer. We uh, asked Bob what Slayer was like. The thing that surprised me the most was that the kids at the concerts were true believers in the aura of evil that the band presents. I mean, the kids were there with all kinds of satanic paraphernalia, every t-shirt, every black leather jacket, had the most grotesque representations of Satanism. But for the guys in the band, it was an act, it was a gimmick, it was simply a way to get the attention of people. In fact, the guys in the band told me, said point blank, seven years ago we were just another garage band in L.A. and we deliberately chose Satanism as a theme to get the attention of the public. And they were even surprised when I talked to them about kids who were Satanists as a result of Slayer's influence. They were amazed to think the kids would take them that seriously and go that far with it. To them, it was just hype, it was all an act, and they couldn't even relate to these kids out there who were involved in sacrificing animals and performing blood ceremonies. They were surprised to hear it. Even though they're not into Satanism, don't they feel responsible because of kids who are listening to their lyrics and then doing what their lyrics are saying, going out and, uh, you know, committing sacrifices and hurting and destroying their own lives? Don't they feel responsible for what they're doing? Absolutely none. They felt no responsibility whatsoever. To them, they're just entertainers. And, of course, like most people, they put it back on the parents. Well, we know the parents have some fault to bear in this. But uh, the position they took was, these are kids who come to our concerts, they buy a ticket, we give them music, we're not responsible what they do before or afterwards. Rock and heavy metal are more than just music, they're an entire lifestyle. We're out here in the front of a rock and roll store here in Denver called Outer Limits, and this is where kids go to buy all the paraphernalia they need to look like their favorite rock bands. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, uh, we're here in Outer Limits, and I guess uh, you must be the owner here? Yes, I am. Okay, and what's your name? Kathy Taylor. All right, Kathy, I'm Blaine Bartell. Good to meet you. Uh, do you have a lot of teenagers coming in here? Yeah, we do. And what kind of things do they come in and buy? They come in by a lot of the local tapes, a lot of the clothes that we sell, patches, bootstraps, wristbands, that kind of thing. All right, so this is kind of where you create your rock and roll image. Yes, it is. How about band members? Do bands come in here? Yeah, that's mostly who we cater to as band members. Yeah, well, good. Uh, so this here, I guess this is where all the local bands are. And uh, let's see, this, I noticed this uh, Tuesday All Ages Night at Rock Island. What is Rock Island? It's a bar they just opened up for all ages. Who writes the lyrics for the, the band? I most of them. Okay. Well, then, uh, did you write this one, Devil Without a Pop? I wrote half of it. Okay. Let me just read the first part, and I want you to comment on it. It says here, where the official sound of Satan, he fills our songs full of hate and love and fun, king of evil, number one. He is Lord Hyde Satan. We work for Satan. We're his henchmen. Collect souls for him. We're the middlemen. All right? So come on now and prove you're a fan. Uh, on the dotted line, sign it in blood, man. The S, the A, the tan. Satan is his name. Now, I want to ask you, though, guys, do you guys believe in Satan? I mean, do you really believe in or is it a big gimmick? He's cool. He's cool. Cool. Depends on your definition of what Satan is, I guess. Well, uh, let's say we define Satan as the ultimate evil, the one who's come to destroy the world, all that uh, kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. see, 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 Satan is not the ultimate evil. He's the one who comes to destroy the evil people. See, God, in, in my mind, is a because he's supposedly all-powerful, but he can't, he doesn't do to these stupid Nazi And so then Satan, he takes these people and fries them up, you know? He's Eternal torment. 
Okay. So Satan's actually the good guy, and uh, old God up in heaven is the bad guy. Is that right? He, right. He's the good guy because he supports everything the humans want to do. God wants to shut off everything the humans want to do. So you see, he's the good guy. What kind of stuff does God want to shut off? Oh, uh, everything that he called sin and that Satan called natural human behavior, see? So. It's just like sarcasm. I mean, if they're like real Satan worshipers, they like sacrifice chickens on the stage, and they don't do that, you know? You haven't seen that happen yet? No. I don't worship the devil. I don't worship anything. I just, you know, you can't preoccupy yourself with things like that. You know, you're just going to mess yourself up. I'm atheist, I guess you can say. I don't believe in God or hell or... It's just, you can't really take it seriously. But many teenagers are taking Satan very serious. Pete Rowland, senior class president at his high school in Carl Junction, Missouri, and his two friends, Jim Hardy and Ron Clements, are serving life sentences without parole for the brutal murder of their friend, Stephen Newberry. The four boys hiked a half a mile into the woods, tied a bagged kitten to a tree, taking turns hitting it like a pinata. Looking for something bigger to kill, they turned on Stephen, clubbed him over 70 times with baseball bats. They proudly proclaim Stephen as their latest sacrifice to Lord Satan. The killers, especially Pete Rowland, had become obsessed with heavy metal bands like Metallica. He took time to write the lyrics to all of his favorite tunes. There's something else controlling me. Death is in the air, he wrote. Strapped in the electric chair, this can't be happening to me. Who made your God to say, I'll take your life from you? Flash before my eyes, now it's time to die. Does today's heavy metal music help lure kids into the hideous elements of Satanism? Pete Rowland's family now thinks so, and experts agree. What we're finding is that many parents of our youth today were youth themselves back in the 60s and early 70s. And the, the, the acid rock movement back in those days uh, did not have the same uh, underlying satanical kinds of, of, of overtones to it. So many parents today are simply looking at what their teenagers are doing and saying, oh, that's so similar to what we did. We must be tolerant of it. It isn't the major moral failures that concern me in the lives of Christian kids, for example, as much as it is the little cutting of corners that may be there because they're not conscious of it, but a particular song or an artist's attitude just desensitize them slightly enough where they would not make the Christian decision or the biblical decision. You know, it stands to reason that if kids want to dress like their favorite bands, then they're going to want to act like them too. And I know that a lot of these bands say that they don't really believe what they're saying about Satanism or about these other things. But you know what? The young people that are watching them and listening to them do believe it. There's a scripture found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, in verse number 5. It says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And the Bible describes a fool as someone who has said in their heart, that there is no God. And these bands that are glorifying Satan and denying Jesus Christ by not only their lyrics, but by their lifestyle, would definitely fall into that category. So without a doubt, rock and roll is contributing to the problem of Satanism in this country. But as the bands will tell you, you don't have to go down and buy their albums. You don't have to show up at their concerts. It's your decision what you listen to. You say, well, does what I listen to really affect the way I live and the things that I do? Absolutely. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You will become what you think upon. You say, well, I like the styles of music. I like heavy metal. Well, guess what? There's good Christian bands out there that can uh, be the kind of bands that you like to listen to. People like Carmen and Petra and White Cross. Bands that are causing you and pointing you to imitate Jesus Christ. And for me, that's better than Warlock Pincher.